Some people may look at this and just see a regular, normal magazine. In prison, something like this is going to be the love of your life. This is my wife, Vita Guerrero. She made it through my whole prison bill while I was incarcerated. For this video here, I'm going to be letting y'all know how an inmate got his head caved in, smashed up by a broken broom all over a magazine. Ha <laughs> ha, Dom the best, finna be this way till I EOS. Take it how you want, nigga, yeah, I'm a pro. Fuck around, I bust your lot while you're at Vizzo. I hate to be this way, but I live for the moment. Waking up every day, show me an opponent. Shanks on deck, hitting bitches with locks. So much pool, I can even start you from the box. You don't wanna pay rent, got me bent. Got lacks on deck, your money was well spent. Vultures on the prowl, so don't try test and step two, cause violent first steps, finessing. You a hold down man, suitcase this. My cell phone, I'm a charger, don't walk with a limp. Get it knocked off or missing, you gon' get it. Next time I see you ass, you gon' leave airlifted. What's up, y'all? You already know, man. K for all TV back in the building. Y'all go ahead and do me that solid favor. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. And also make sure you hit the notification bell so you can see it first. Welcome back to the channel, y'all. Today I'm going to be talking about how an incident took place between two inmates. And one of them ended up getting their head bashed in by a broken broomstick over a magazine. Okay, now, for those that know that have been locked up before, when it comes to magazines... People take them shit seriously, okay? It ain't got to just be, you know, a sexual book, like a straight stunt magazine or a Playboy or anything like that. People get in the shit and get into problems and got to suffer consequences and repercussions over books, regular books with no pictures in it. You know what I'm saying? And when it comes to something that has a particular female or a pretty looking individual in there, people will take it to the next level. Okay, like I showed y'all in my intro, this right here is one of the magazines that I had with me throughout my whole prison bid. All right, and I managed to actually make it home with this and keep it as a memory, you know, compared to all the other ones I had that got knocked off. But if you actually look, if I zoom in right here, you can actually see how it's got my name with the prison that I was at and everything. All right, of course, I had to tape it, make it look legit. So when they do shakedowns and they look, they're going to look down there to see if that was actually his or did it actually come in the mail because then they obviously let it in. You feel me? But anyways, now it's kind of hard, you know, protecting these things. You know, people want to borrow them all the time so they can do what they got to do. You know, people will pay you to borrow them. You know, you got to make sure nobody takes any pages out of them. You know, that's why people usually cover each page with tape. Therefore, it's not, you know, it won't rip easily and it prevents it from getting wet. You know what I'm saying? You could literally tape every single page of the magazine front and back with tape that you get off the back of an envelope or off of a roll of tape that you steal from the education building. And it's damn near waterproof. People could bring that shit in the shower with them, in the bathroom stall, wherever. And you ain't got to worry about it getting any water damage on the fucking pictures. Okay? Now, for this one here, I ain't going to forget it, but I remember when these two people had gotten an argument over a magazine. Okay? And it was a straight stunting magazine. Y'all know what those are. If not, I'll break it down a little bit. It's kind of like the same type of magazine I have right here next to me, but... That one there has got a lot of big booty bitches, you know what I'm saying? Them hoes got ass for days, you know what I'm saying? Babies, it'd be bad babies, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, people got a lot of shit built up and a lot of pressure and what better way than to release it, you know? So, this one dude had let another dude borrow his magazine, okay? And, you know, they, 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 I used to see them, you know, hanging out, you know, on the dip bar and shit on the rec yard and maybe walking a couple laps together and stuff. You feel me? So when you see someone mobbing with someone else, you feel like, oh, they're homeboys. You know, so that's how I was looking at it. I was looking like, oh, they dogs. You know what I'm saying? But in this case, I guess they literally were just business, you know, at, you know, they weren't really homeboys. They was just always talking about the next fucking deal they were going to do, I guess. So he lent it to the person. And I guess he kept asking them over and over again. Hey, bro, what's up? Let me get my magazine back. Hey, bro, when are you going to let me get my magazine back? You, you know, say, hey, bro, I need you to shoot my magazine back. You know, stuff like that. And he kept postponing them. He kept riding them out and wasn't sending it yet. He was as if he wasn't done with it. You know what I'm saying? And he would, you know, I'll pay you more. I'll pay you more. You know, whatever it is. He just kept paying them like, like a fucking rental. Like when you, back in the day when Blockbuster had DVDs and you could rent the DVD. And then if you wanted to rent it for even longer, you could pay the additional. That's basically what he was doing. So even though the dude's getting paid money, you know. It got to the point to where he was like, no, I really want my magazine back. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
you've been postponing me and you've been paying me off for a while now. It ain't about the money no more. It's about my bitches. You know, it's it's about my wife. You know what I'm saying? Like that cover girl is your wife. Vita Guerrero was my wife when I was in prison. You feel what I'm saying? So he kept telling him that. Like, no, I want my magazine. Fuck the money. I want my magazine. And, you know, the first thing you're going to think is, damn, bro, he ain't got it no more. He sold it or something. He gave it away or he let someone else borrow it. Or maybe it got knocked off and he was scared to tell him that, hey, it got slain during a shakedown. They found it and took it and there's nothing I could do about it. So I was just trying to pay you off for it, you know. But if that was the case, he could have just kept it real and told him that from the get-go. Like, look, bro, shit sucks, dog, but the guards found that shit, dog. You feel me? Whatever I got to pay, I'll pay it, bro. You know, I'm just being real with you, dog. I can't give you back something that I ain't got if that was the case. But what it was is he still had it. Not only did he want to keep it, but... There was a page or two missing out of it. You feel me? And he didn't want to give it back to him like that. You know, so it was like he was holding on to that shit and paying him just so that way, you know, he could hold on to it longer to prevent from getting into a situation with him. Because he knew once he looked and fucking seen that a couple pages were missing, it was going to turn into some shit, you know. And the pages weren't missing because of him, but the pages were missing because someone he let borrow it. You see, he let someone else borrow it when he was borrowing it himself and pages come up missing and shit and you're not thinking nothing of it. They'll drop it on your bed when they're done with it or they might let someone else use it or someone else will see it and take it from them. That's why you never lend someone something that you're borrowing. You get what I'm saying? Because then you get put in situations just like this. You know what I'm saying? So he didn't want to give it back to him like that. So he kept, you know, postponing him. Well, that dude decided to go over to his dorm like, hey, bro, I'm here to get my magazine. I told you for the last couple of weeks, you know, I want my shit. So the dude was telling him, like, well, look, bro, I'm not giving it to you right now, you know? And he's like, you know, I've been giving you the money, you feel me? So you shouldn't really be bitching, you know what I'm saying? Like, you shouldn't complain because I've been paying you to use it. He's like, yeah, but I need it. I need my magazine. I want my magazine, you know? So it turned into an altercation. It turned into an argument. And at this time, where I was housed at is it was a butterfly dorm. So you got the officer station like this in the middle, and then you got a quad here, quad here, quad there, quad there. So it's supposed to look like a butterfly. You got the body where the guards are, and then the top wing and the bottom wing, and then the top wing and the bottom wing, shaped like a butterfly. So they call it butterfly dorm. And uh, I was on the other side with the dude whose magazine it was. You feel me? But then on the other side was where the dude who was borrowing it. You know what I'm saying? So when he went over there, you know, they exchanged words, and it was something about where he wasn't going to give him the magazine back. So dude comes back to the dorm, fire hot, you know what I'm saying, ready to crash, ready to say, you know what, fuck it, bro, we going to confinement, we going in about my magazine, which in all reality, the dude who borrowed the magazines, luckily, that this dude didn't decide to like wet him up or anything right then and there, because a lot of situations usually go down right there where that shit starts, you know what I'm saying, but instead he came back to the dorm huffing and puffing about the whole situation, and then he went around and he started asking people for knives, me, I was one of the people he came up to and wanted a knife. He said, what's up, Frog? You got any knives you trying to let me hold? And I said, I'm going to be real with you. I got a knife, but I can't just let you hold it. You know what I'm saying? And he's like, man, I'm good for it. I said, yeah, but you might take this same knife that I have and go put it in somebody that I'm cool with. You know, or, or you might go put that shit in a gang member and then they find the knife and be like, oh, yeah, that's that white boy K-Frog's knife. Now it looks like I made the knife or gave you the knife to go put inside of that gang member. You see, so I got to know more about what's going on before I could just up and hand you a knife. Now, let me make this clear, though. If you were one of my homeboys and you're someone I vibe with every single day, like you was my dog, and then, you know, whatever you get into, I'm getting into, and vice versa, you could hold my knife regardless who you're going to hit with it. I don't care if you're going to hit a gang member. I don't care if you're going to hit a guard with it. I don't care if you're going to hit another person I know. You know, if you're my homeboy and you're my dog and you're someone that I fuck with and, and we, you know, like we, we dogs for real, then... It's a different story. But if you're just someone that I know, someone that I'm cool with, you know, that we just know each other because we're in the dorm, you can't expect me to just up and hand you a knife. You feel me? So I told him. He's like, man, dude over there playing with my magazine, yada, yada, yada. And then that's when he gave me the breakdown of the whole situation. You know, that's when he was like, man, I tried to get the magazine back for him the last couple weeks. He'd been postponing me, He'd been paying me and this and that. And I said, oh, he paying you though, so you good. He was like, yeah, but I want the magazine back. You feel me? So I'm starting to feel like he ain't got my magazine because no matter what, he won't give it back to me. So I'm like, oh, I see what you're saying. He's like, the money ain't enough. He want his wife back. You feel me? So I'm like, yeah, I feel you. He's like, all right, dog, I'm going to figure something out. So he walks around, keeps going to different cells, asking people for knives, trying to find some type of weapon or whatever. 
couldn't find one, I guess. So when they eventually popped the doors for us to go to Chow, what he ends up doing is, which was a smart ass idea. Okay, now when you got the butterfly dorm, like I'm saying, when the officer bubbles in the middle, you don't have access to the two quads on the other side. You feel me? Like that's a separate door. So like when you come out of your quad, you got your quad and another quad and then it's a wall with the officer up there in the glass looking down on you. And then there's a door on the back end of, the, of that wall that the officer will cut through when he comes into your quad, he'll cut through and then go over there into that sally port. So each, each side has its own sally port. That's what it's called, you feel me? So when you're in a sally port, when you walk into the door, you see the officers up there in the glass and then you see number straight glass this way and then you got one dorm, another dorm, and this is considered a sally port. The other quads are on the other side of the officer bubble, their own sally port. So what he did is, before we went to Chow, he fucking, he went out there. He, he went like this, the officers popped the thing, let him out there into the sally port, and he just started sweeping the sally port. You know, so now I'm looking at him like, he ain't no house man. You know, normally the house bands are the ones that do the cleaning and shit. But what he did is he swept that side of the sally port. You know, he swept it real good, like a professional job. It wasn't like... It wasn't like he just skim coated it. You know, he literally was out there sweeping for a little while before we went to chow. So then I'm watching him and I'm like, all right, fuck it, I guess he's sweeping. Never caught on to it, but in the back of his mind, he was plotting what he was doing. So then before chow came, he managed to where they popped the side door to let him go into the other wing sally port. And what he did is when he went over there, he placed the broom over there. You feel me? And then... He came back and was in our quad. He didn't do that side of the sally port. Now, in your mind, you would think, oh, okay, it makes sense because the, you know, the, the housemen on this side of the dorm would clean the sally port, and then the housemen that are on that side of the dorm would clean that sally port. You know, that's just the only thing that popped up in my mind. You know, oh, he ain't going to sweep over there because that's not our sally port. That's that side's. What he really did is he put the fucking broom there just so it was there when he was going to, you know, finally take flight on what he was going to do. So, once they called Chow, we all went to the Sally Port, boom, we went to Chow. On the way back from Chow, he fell back a little bit in line because we're all the same dorm, so every day is different. When they pop the doors for Chow, they might fill both Sally Ports up. So this side, the officer station's filled with inmates, and so is this side. And then they might just pop one side, and then as you're in Chow or almost a child, they'll pop the other side and everyone, you know, meet you over there. So you kind of like run into the people in those quads every day regardless, you know. If they do wreck, the whole dorms go on the wreck. Both sally ports, all four quads. So he managed to where he fell back and went into the other sally port with the individual when we came back from Chow. All right. Like I thought he was going to go over there and, you know, bump him or, or maybe he got a knife in time to stab him or something like that. But in all reality, what he did is, while we was in our sally port, you know, you got to shut the door. When you, when you walk into the sally port, the doors must be shut in order for them to open the door to your quad. You know what I'm saying? Just like when the quad doors open, that shit's got to be shut in order for them to open the door to leave the sally port to go out into the compound. So as we're inside the sally port waiting for them to pop the door, we're telling everyone, shut the door, shut the door. So that way they could pop our quad door so we can go to our cells. All of a sudden you hear a... Pat, like a like a snap noise, a real big snap noise, you know. And then at this time, when people walk into the two sally ports, you can walk over there to where that door is that cuts through, and people be talking and shit through the door. Depending on what institution you're at, they might have a glass window on the door, so y'all can literally sit there and face to face through the glass, talk to each other, or you know, under the door, slide kites or whatever. Or it might be a, just a straight steel door to where you can't see each other. Well, this one. It was a glass see-through, you feel me? So once you hear the pat noise, everyone starts running over there looking. And what it was is he put that broom there. He broke the broom. So as everyone runs over there to see from the door that we could only see through that door into that sally port, he just jumped on that dude and started beating him with this broomstick. Now, the crazy thing is, is once he started doing it, we heard all the commotion and seen everybody shifting and shit over there and everything. The officers like made a noise and started screaming over the intercom and all that shit. The dude who got hit with the broomstick was split wide open to where he was running trying to get away from that broomstick. You know what I'm saying? And it looked like he dead ass like stabbed him because 
he ran to the back of the sally port where we were all at on the other side of the door and that scuffle all happened like right there you know what i'm saying and there was blood everywhere and when i looked it looked like the dude had like just a just a fucking like straight indent like he smashed his skull like his skull was busted open you know what i'm saying like he cracked something there was no way that his skull didn't have no broken bones in it you feel me and to be real i don't know if he stabbed him with the the sharp end of the broom or 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 hit him with it or what he did but he was on him like it wasn't like he just did it one time and left him alone he chased him to where we were at and was beating the shit out of him with the thing had the dude right there fucking hitting him with it hitting him with it that dude who ended up getting hit with that broom he got airlifted he couldn't even walk that's how bad he got beaten with a broomstick you feel what i'm saying and i know a broomstick could be a, a major weapon inside of prison it ain't like one of these ones you get on the streets the little metal pole or nothing like that it'd be them hard ass wooden ones you know what i'm saying them shits will help you if you ever need it you know what i'm saying if ever someone's trying to jump you or some shit like that or if you get yourself in a situation where like a sissy or someone that you think sick might have some shit you don't want to fight them you grab you that fucking broomstick boy and you beat the ass with it you know what I'm saying? Like I said in plenty of videos, me, I won't personally fight a sissy, you know, because you never know what they're carrying or nothing like that. I won't line one up. I won't get in the paint with them even if they call me out or none of that. I'm straight because I don't know if they're sick or anything like that, but I will grab a broom and beat the dog shit out you from a distance with the broom. That's, you know what I'm saying? Like the broom is a major go-to if, if you're outnumbered or anything like that. But he broke that bitch. That bit was broken and it was sharp. Like Buffy the Vampire fucking steak knife. You know what I'm saying? And... When he was beating that dude, there was people inside the damn Sally Port just watching it. They didn't want no parts of it. You know what I'm saying? And they finally put us all in our cell. They made us all go in our dorm, locked down and shit. So we're all in our cell and shit. Where my cell was, I could see at the time. I could see the Sally Port. I was closer to the end where the showers were from in my quad. And I could see my Sally Port. But I can't see through the door. I can only see the bottom half of that side door that we're talking about well in order to break them up they brought the dude who got banged up through the door through our sally port and then got the other one restrained and handcuffs and everything and had him on the ground hemmed up in the sally port where all happened at man when they brought this dude through that door and i could see him walking through our sally port his shit was so banged up and so fucked up like it was unreal and it was like there was like, you would thought that he was the dude that did something because there was like fucking nine officers like carrying him. You know, you would have thought he was the same. And they cuffed him. They had him in cuffs also. He was laying there like this, fucking, uh, uh. You can hear him real loud as they were, but they were carrying him like, you know, and he was all banged up just gushing. You see that shit dripping as they're carrying him. You know, he got his whole shit bashed in by a broomstick. You know, and you would think about it. Ah, a broomstick can't do that much damage. Bullshit. It all depends. You never know. You never know what damage you can actually do to someone or what can actually happen to someone when you try to do something to them. You feel me? And I guess he couldn't find a knife, so he decided to break the broomstick and use it on that person. You feel me? Was he wrong? Me, personally, I don't think he was wrong at all. Because, not just because he was on my side of the dorm and I talked to him and I didn't talk to the other dude or anything like that. Just there's principles and there's valuable things and meanings behind people's actions in prison. So I feel like he did what he was supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? And when you take it to a certain extent, when you get into a situation, you know, sometimes just whooping someone isn't enough. You know what I'm saying? That ain't, might not teach them a lesson. They might know how to take an ass whooping. That's why they do the things they do because they know at the end of the day, yeah, I might not know how to fight. I might not kill nobody, but I know I could take an ass whooping and wear it if I have to. You see what I'm saying? So... Sometimes it's got to be worse than just whooping them. You feel me? It's it's got to be to where you, you literally you you penalize them. You know what I'm saying? You flush them out. You do what you have to do to them. You feel me? And I've seen some bloody ass situations inside of prison. Literally, like so much gory ass shits taking place. It's unreal. And then remember, I told y'all that I used to buff floors and shit inside of prison. Environmental services. I had to take a six week class in medical to learn how to clean up, throw up, and blood and all this different stuff, just in case if I wanted to buff floors on the streets. You feel me? So I've seen so many situations, dog. Like it's you. You know it's bad when you go into a situation and there's so much blood where it looks like. A bitch just gave birth. Like she just went through labor. 
but really it was just two dudes that got into a situation, an argument over a magazine, you know, and it isn't just a little bit of marks, it's a lot of blood marks, piles of that shit, drip marks, smear marks from them running around fighting for the dude trying to get missing, slipping on his own blood, you know, and to me, I was like, damn, that why you don't play with people's shit. That why you you never ever borrow something from someone unless you can cover it, okay? And just because you get money or you got money or you have the funds to cover it doesn't always mean you can cover it because sometimes people don't want money. People don't want that. They feel like what you're giving them isn't enough. You know what I'm saying? Even if you're giving them more than what the shit's worth. You get what I'm saying? Literally. I remember one time I told a video where I ended up Play, uh, I let someone borrow another phone that someone else left and then next thing you know it got knocked off and they wanted me to replace the phone and all this and I said look I give you the money I give you the PayPal whatever boom, boom, I'll throw my half down with the person who got it knocked off you know what I'm saying boom boom I'll throw my half down because I'm not the one that got caught with the phone so I said boom I'll throw half down we don't want the money we want a new phone you feel me they, and they you know they, they felt like my money wasn't good they felt like the money that I was going to give them was not good you feel me they wanted a phone you see? Making it like, I felt like it was like a put down. Oh, you gonna get us a phone. Well, fuck that. You ain't getting the money no more either. That shit's off the table. You feel me? And that's it. And then it turned into some drama. Oh, you just gonna buck like that? Man, I tried to pay y'all motherfuckers money and shit. Y'all tripping. Yeah, that's it, bro. I, you know what I'm saying? At that time, it was hard to get phones. You can't, I can't give you something I ain't got access to, but I can give you the money that you can go buy your phone for. You see? So people, sometimes they want something different. What they have to them is more than what you're trying to bring to the table. And for that, like I said, that dude, that was his wife. That was his wife. He wasn't playing, you feel me? And then you think about it, well, how was it his wife if he was letting the dude borrow it, right? Well, you got people in there that don't want to steal your shit, take your shit. You got people in there that'll be scared to lose it, you know? Scared people are going to put a kite on them or tell an officer about the contraband they got or scared that someone's going to fucking... You know, try to steal it from them if they don't let them borrow it. You know, so a lot of people just want to stay off the radar and think they're cool with someone by letting someone borrow something. You see? And I don't know if that was the case there, you know, but at the same time, you got to be ready for that. You know, if you're letting somebody hold something, you got to be ready for anything to happen. You got to be ready for them to get it knocked off by the officers. You got to be ready for someone to steal it or take it from them. You got to be worried about them letting someone else borrow it and then them doing something with it. You got to worry about them not giving it back themselves. You got to worry about them damaging it. You know, there's all types of things. And if you ain't willing to collect it, if you ain't willing to bring that shit to the table and present that shit to them in their face when something comes up missing, then your ass don't need to be letting nobody borrow nothing. You understand? And when it comes to these magazines and shit like this, shit gets deadly. You know what I'm saying? That dude there, I don't know what happened to him. I just know we never seen him again. They, he got airlifted and they brought his ass to outside medical. You know what I'm saying? And I guarantee you, you know, if he lived or, you know, whatever it may be, I guarantee you, you know, he'll tell the story or whatever, but he probably won't tell it 100% how it went. He won't tell it was over a magazine. You know, he, he'll just tell how someone hit him with a broom, but he ain't going to say the whole scenario. Then the other dude ended up going to CM. He got put on the slab for about killing that dude. You know what I'm saying? And our, and our compound was on lockdown for like three days after the situation. You feel me? But it all happened because of a magazine, y'all. You get what I'm saying? And to me, I'm like, damn, that dude's shit just looks so caved in from when I seen it. When I seen it, when I was up close looking through that door, when we was all like on top of each other looking through that shit, from what I just seen through that, I'm like, oh, he fucked up. Like, like he was banged up just from that, bro. Like, I know he, he couldn't even see out of his whole side of his face. And he was fighting for his life. You know what I'm saying? And a broomstick was the damn cause of the damage. You see what I'm saying? And it, you think about it. As bad as that was, in my mind, I'm like, shit, I don't know if he got lucky the dude didn't find a knife. Or if he would have been better off getting hit up with the knife. Because that shit did mad damage. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, damn, if he had a knife, he definitely would have killed him. There was no ifs, ands, or buts. He probably would have went straight for the neck and the face. And he probably would have flatlined him. Probably wouldn't have been that much running away from him. Like he was doing in that. But, you know, at the same time, he can't really do nothing. You know, you think about it. When the broom's in full length. It's easy for someone to swing and you grab that motherfucker, you feel me? But you break that bitch in half, you got two pieces and shit, depending on if it was a fully in half, like even pieces, where it looks like them shits that they use in fucking Taekwondo or whatever, martial arts, 
You know, it, it could be, you know, shit through damage, you feel me? But if that shit was broken one longer than another piece and he had that one little rod like that big, you know what I'm saying? And, bro, like, it's kind of hard to, you know, he connects. Oh, shit. Oh, 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 shit. Oh, 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 shit. He getting me. You know, like, there's so much you can do, though. It's harder to get that little piece of rum than it is a whole broomstick. You feel me? But at the end of the day, man, that's just what happens when you play with people's shit. This is what happens when you borrow things and you can't return them how they gave them to you. You know what I'm saying? That's like me giving you a brand new soda. Yeah, bro, I'll let you hold the soda. And then when you give it back, you give me an empty can. Like, bro, you just gave me a canned soda. You didn't give me a fucking full soda like I gave you. You feel me? Like that's you got to give things back to people the way that they gave them to you. If not, you can find yourself in situations, bro. You know what I'm saying? And to me, I'm gonna be real. Them brooms, them shits are undefeated, dog. In certain situations, I'm telling you, them shits could be a go-to. You feel me? But anyways, y'all, I want y'all to drop in the comment section, man, and y'all let me know if y'all ever seen anybody get split with a broom. If you've ever seen anybody use a broom in a situation, drop it in the comment section. I know when I was at one camp when people would fade inside of the closet, there was like a like a, like a a uh, sweep closet, like where they put the broom and all that shit in there, the mop closet. People would fade in there and shit like that, and people would grab the broom and go in there, and you'd hear banging and all this different shit going on in there, and it was so small in there that I don't think they got the full swing of the broom, but people would fight inside the mop closet with the broomstick you know those things right there are something that you know you could use one day if you need to and i'm pretty sure some people have seen some individuals hit somebody with a broom you know i've seen someone get hit in the back of the head with a broom not even in prison though this was in school when i was younger he ate that shit though you feel me that was a totally different scenario you feel me but anyways drop in the comment section let me know what y'all think i appreciate y'all tuning in like i always say y'all make sure y'all hit that like subscribe button on the way out if you ain't hit it on the way in and like I always say, y'all, keeping them rat squares, clowns, chomos, pedos, gunners, wannabe island boys, clout chasers, people with no fucking self-esteem, no goals, straight haters, keep them out your circle, man. Until next time, this the one and only, Frog.